Okay, so for this video, I'm going to talk about creating the environment, as the FA call it. Um, my experiences of me trying to create um, a fun, professional, and, and safe environment um, during an actual football session. And again, I'll, I'll relate um, a lot of my experiences with working in a professional environment, and I'll mention um, a couple of coaches that have got some some really good ways of creating that environment and, and, and setting that scene so to speak um, and then obviously you can you can kind of have a little look at um, some of my my sessions as to how I create the environment the best that I possibly can and like I've already mentioned, you know, everything is about player outcome. So you creating the session and creating the environment should equal the player getting the best possible outcome from the session, learn and develop. Now, if it can be in, in a fun and structured way, then perfect because obviously players are going to... Um, learn more if, if, if they're really engaged and if they're really having having fun. But I've also found, depending on the age group, so if you look at the age groups that I predominantly cover, and that's 15s, under 15s and upwards, you know, fun, I call it serious fun. So they need to understand what their role is within the session. They need to have fun and participate and enjoy themselves, but they need, they need to learn and they need to push themselves. Um, obviously, in, in the other phases, like in the foundation phase, fun would be really, really, really important. So, um, for me, I've categorised it into four key areas, really, as regards to my areas that I would look at, and that's your session introduction, the player engagement and learning for the player, the coach observing and adapting, if required, and then the checking of the learning or the review or the, 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 the feedback process at the end of the session. So a couple of mentions really as, as regards to the people that um, I've been fortunate enough to, to, to work with. And setting the scene is really, really important. And I've mentioned it in my last video where the players come up to the area that they're going to be you know, practicing and doing their training session in, and it's already set. The session is laid out, the bibs are done, the balls are stacked nicely, um, and, and immediately the players recognise and understand that this is a place where we develop, where we improve. And the way that I would describe it is we are teachers of football, and therefore the sessions that we are providing are, are lessons. It's not, you know, like a school in a traditional uh, classroom, but it is an environment where we as coaches have a responsibility to teach and educate players, and the classroom is, is, is the pitch. So when they enter that classroom, when they enter that space, they have to understand that things have been organised in order to help them. And I believe and I've seen and I've been told that players respond really, really well if everything is set and it's done and they walk up, bang, done. From the coach's responsibilities to ensure that that scene has been set. And there's other things that um, I will also personally try and do and, and, and that is to have visual aids uh, such as a tactics board or, um, you know, like an easel type situation where information is on, um, you know, a board for them to see. So today we're going to look at so-and-so uh, and it's written on the board. So today's theme is going to be uh, 1v1 defending. So the players will come in, they'll see that the session is, is set up they may go over to, to the, the, the whiteboard and they may have a read. They put their equipment in a set area which has been already laid out by the coaches. 
water bottles, spare pair of boots, rain jacket, whatever it is, bang, it's in it's in that area. They then go on and, and, and almost um, start their individual um, focus areas, which we spoke about in the last video. So creating that scene and that environment is really, really important. Then once kind of everyone has, has, has arrived, then it's bringing everyone in. And then it's setting the scene, led by the coach to the player. And explaining to the player through either the visual aids, visual aids, um, tactics board or, or, or whiteboard or iPads, all of that kind of stuff, um, written down, anything it may, may well be. This is what we're going to cover today. This is why we're going to do it. And this is how we're going to do it. And these are my expectations as a coach for you as the player. And the things that I would always say to my players is I, I expect three things. And I don't say this every session, but I'll, I'll, I'll say it at the very beginning of the season. And the first thing is when I lay down my expectations to the player is that they respect the game. So they respect everything alongside what comes with the game. Secondly is they learn. So they are a receptive learner and they're here to learn. So they're, they're engaged and they understand that when they come up onto the session, there's a learning theme that they have to abide by. And, and thirdly, it's, it's give everything. It's, it's work for yourself, work hard for yourself and work hard for the team. So they're the kind of the three key areas that I would always introduce at the beginning of the season. And if I need to reinforce and if I need to go back, then that's what I'll always refer back to. Respect the game and everything that comes with the game. Coaches, parents, referees, all of that element, be an active learner. So understand that they're there to learn and be receptive to learning. And then be a, a, a willing hard worker, put graft in. Someone who does that really well is um, Steve Avery, who sets a very, very disciplined environment. And people talk about the, these coaches and these managers who have this presence and have this aura. Um, Steve Avery will always be very, very firm and has this aura of setting the scene. These are the expectations. This is what I expect you to do. And players quite clearly link straight to that. And he's not afraid to be very firm, but also fair. But the way that I would describe Steve is, is that everyone knows exactly what's expected of them. He sets that disciplined parameter and then he abides by it. Um, player engagement and learning would be my second key area. So what are the players... Are, are, are the players engaged in the session, and are the players engaged in you as a coach? And how do you do that? So, um, giving messages across verbally, getting down onto their eye level if they're a younger player, speaking to them appropriately on their level, and having that real connection with that player. Once that connection has been established, and the player trusts you, and that will take a period of time, that will take a period of, of discussion, that will take a period of you as a coach being genuinely interested and paying attention in that player and giving them your time as much as you possibly can, both off the pitch and on the pitch. Once you've created that connection and that trust, then the player will, will, will be engaged in you.
If the players really understand that you're there, yeah, you may be firm. Yeah, you may be disciplined like Steve Avery. But if the players respect that you're there to help them, they'll engage with you. They'll engage. And it's this um, really important factor that if the players understand and build a relationship with the coach and they know genuinely that the coach is there to help them, then they'll be engaged. And if they're engaged, then they'll learn. And if, if, if the information is being put across by the coach to the player, that is the correct information, that is the information that develops and meets the need of the player, then the player will be receptive to the learning and the player would therefore be improved. Someone who does this really well within the foundation phase at Cholton is a, is a coach called Dave Chatwin and he has a real good balance of being very disciplined, very structured within his sessions, but also what I like about what he does is he's very enthusiastic, very knowledgeable, really cares for the player's development, but his standards are very high in everything that he expects of the player and his demands are really, really high. And at first, I've noticed that the player's uh, a little bit overwhelmed by his expectations, but they quickly understand where they need to get to, and therefore Dave constantly drives them forwards and gets them to a, a, a really competitive position individually as a player. And what I really like is the way that he does that is he links a lot of his um, coaching points and coaching interventions back to the back to the game. So he will link back, did you see Messi do this on Saturday? Did you see Mo Salah do that against Manchester City for Liverpool? And that connection with the player and then creating that connection with the player so he links it to the game itself within his session, the players suddenly generate this, this picture in their minds and it makes it a bit clearer. What would Messi do there? Would he do that? Would he take a player on? Yeah, he would, wouldn't he? You've got the space there. And he really uses the game and he uses top, top players and recent players that have done things within the games that he knows the players would have watched that he's working with. And he will then link that to his coaching sessions. Just one thing that I've noticed he does really, really well. Um, and then... The third part is, is the observation and the adapting. So the observation is, is a key tool for, for any coach working across any levels. But the observation is really, really important for the coach to be observing the session and observing the development of each individual and, and, and processing what they're getting from that. Are they doing what I'm asking them to do? Are they using both feet in a dribbling practice? Are they using different turns? within the practice that I've set out for them to create and use different terms. And that way, you need to observe, are they doing what they've been asked to do? How the coach has demonstrated them to do it? And if they're not, do I step in? Do I adapt for them? So if they're struggling to do a turn with their left foot, do I still encourage them to use their left foot? but adapt the turn and then build gently towards that turn. And the adapting, the observation of, of, of the coach and adapting it to meet either individual needs or group needs is a really, really important skill that the coach needs to have. If they're doing a possession session, if the session keeps breaking down because they're not, making 10 passes, which is what the coach has asked them to do, is it because the area is too small? So having those observational skills and adapting either the, 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 the size of the practice in that example or adapting what you're asking each individual player to do is, is a real um, key skill that the coach needs to have. And then reverting back to the player engagement and the player learning, it's then being able to intervene and engage with a player 
and being able to connect with the player so that their learning continues and is always as progressive as it can be. And then finally, it's the checking of the learning. And someone that I work with again at, at, at Cholton who's, who works with the 15-16s is a gentleman called Reese Williams. And he's really, really, really positive and really upbeat and really understanding in his debriefs. So his debriefs go on, but he will go through a lot of the learning that has occurred during his sessions. And he will ask and probe lots of different players in lots of different ways. Again, linking back to he'd, he'd recreate a situation and he'd, and he'd ask questions based on the situation that he's recreated. he used those visual aids in regards to it would be cones, it would be a tactic board. Um, he'll throw up those what if, what about this circumstance that we worked in? And he will probe and he will ask lots of questions to all of the players to essentially check how much of the information that he has given to them has actually stuck. And that's a, a, a really important um, gauge to try and get back from the players as regards to, I might be, as a coach, waffling on about this, that and the other. But if the players don't quite understand my key points, then you'll find that out during the debrief or the feedback or the question and answer at the end of the session. And one thing that um, Reese is always passionate about, and, and, and I completely support this, is that the time on the grass of them actually doing the session isn't stopped or hindered. They, they complete the doing time and then the debrief and the question and answer will be additional time so that it doesn't eat into their actual time on the grass developing. So they're kind of my, my key experiences. They're kind of how I would look at um, a, 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 a creating that environment. Um, and one thing that I try and do and you, you may notice during my videos if, if you sit and watch them, but I try and add a little bit of humour, a little bit of light-hearted humour. So uh, my a license session at, um, at St George's Park, um, I will add in, into my introduction, a little bit of humour. Because I know that players of any level, and certainly within the academy system, there's going to be elements of nerves, there's going to be elements of worry, there's going to be elements of um, anxiousness at the beginning of a session. You might have outlined a session topic and they might go, that's not one of my strengths. I know that I'm not very good at doing turns with my left foot, so they might start to worry. And what I try to try to do is, is, is ease that through elements of humour. And I think that that is quite important because it, it lightens the mood and hopefully it would relax the player. And this is really important, is to have players coming into the environment who aren't necessarily relaxed, but they're not worried. They're not anxious or they're not nervous. And if you get a player who's not worried, anxious or nervous, then they're going to express themselves positively during a session and they're going to do well. So just one thing to, 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 to consider, these are children, these are human beings and that's an element of me trying to make it fun and a little bit of light hearted because that's what the game should be. The players should embrace and love playing the game. Um, so once again, thanks for tuning in and, and, and listening. I'm going to continue this session uh, in my next video as to how I would review a session and the experiences that I've had in reviewing a session and how that now therefore links to the next session I'll do. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.